Hello everyone, I'm your hostess with the mostest 8 second gaming and something that I've been seeing a lot of people struggle with lately is how to deal with aggressive players. Lately in Apex we've been seeing a lot of people going into smurf queues and we've also been seeing a lot of wonky matchmaking systems where you might be put into a lobby that you're not supposed to be in. We see predators getting matched up with platinums and sometimes people don't exactly know the steps to deal with it. So we're going to be breaking that all down by the end of this video you'll start to understand what you need to be doing. But just quickly guys if you are here you obviously want to get better at Apex and if that's true then you need to check out the Game Leap website right now. Over there we have hundreds of videos made by top level Apex players aimed at making you the best player you can possibly be. No matter what you struggle with we have a solution for you and we also have 10 plus videos coming out every single week. So if you want to start climbing in Apex click the link in the description, pick yourself up a membership or I won't get us McDonald's on the way home. But okay let's jump right into things and the first tip that I have for you guys is you need to understand your situation. I see a lot of people not really understand what this means. They say, hey, I'm playing the game, I already know what situation I'm in, but do you really? When you get into a fight, you have to know what legends they are playing so that you can know their abilities and how they're going to approach the fight most likely. If they have a horizon, you can't really play on high ground because they're just going to take it almost instantly. If they have a caustic, you can't really try to lock down a building because he'll just slowly choke you out. So understanding the legends that they're playing, you can start to position yourself a lot better in the fight. You also need to understand where you and your teammates are because if you are all caught out in the open you're gonna have a hard time getting to safety if they're just rushing you. You need to know where your teammates are so that if you can get to them safely you get to them because it's better to be in numbers or if they have to come to you then you need to be posturing up so that you can start to shoot for them so that they can get to you safely. On top of that, you also need to know what buildings or cover or just other playable areas that are around you. Because if they're rushing you, you might have to leave the spot that you are in currently even if it's a solid spot. Sometimes there's just going to be fights where you have to reposition and you have to know what's around you to play. And taking in information does not stop there, there's still more to look at. You also need to know where they are coming from. Because if one of them is split off from their team, then you can look to collapse on them, single them out and make it a quick 3v2. And if at all possible, you need to see what guns they have and also what armor they have. Now, the way that you can start to tell this is if they are shooting at you. Typically in Apex, you can tell what gun someone's using just from the way that it fires. Each gun has a different unique sound and fire rate, so you can tell it from that. And if you are able to get some shots out on them, then you can tell what kind of armor they have. When you understand what guns and armor they have, then you can start to understand what you need to be doing because if your team has the armor advantage, say they're all on blues and you're all on purples, then you can't let them be aggressive on you. You need to turn the tides and be aggressive on them. You have the armor advantage, you already have something above them. Use it. Or if you know that they're all close range weapons, say they all have cars for some reason, then you can start to play a little bit further away from them, keeping space so that their guns are not as effective. But okay, that's a lot of information to take in and I know it's going to be tough at first. But once you have all that information, you can move into tip number two and that is to make a plan in your head. I see way too many people panic in fights and have no idea what to do. They turn, see somebody running straight at them and it's basically a deer in a headlight situation, they just get run down. If you want to beat these aggressive teams, you need to have split second reaction time and know your plan of attack or even a plan of defense. It doesn't have to be some big elaborate like Ocean's Eleven type plan, it just could be simply run back to the building that you were in. Over time you will start to develop that fast reaction and planning and be able to make more elaborate plans for your attack or defense. But once you're able to have this split second reaction time then you can relay it to your team so that they're on the same page. Most of the times what these aggressive teams are trying to do is split your team up just by sheer brute force. Because if they're fast enough then they can catch one of you off guard at least. So once you're fast enough to react to that, you need to get your team to react to it as well. Now, this is not something that you can pick up overnight. It will be something that you have to work on over your course of playing the game. But something that you just have to do is just make calls. Even if it's the wrong call, making that split second decision will start to train you to become a better player. Something that I see a lot of people struggle with is when they make a bad call, they get stuck in their head and then it just makes them play worse the rest of the night. You guys have to understand that making bad calls is still a good thing because you can learn from it and grow from it. Making the wrong calls is just as useful as making the right call because if you never lose, you're never actually going to understand how to become a better player. So what I want you guys to do in your games is to just make a call as soon as you get into a fight. 
Over time, you'll start to make the right calls a lot more often, but if it's the wrong call, deal with that later. Don't get stuck in your head. Don't beat yourself down. It happens. But okay, let's jump into tip number three though, and that is to execute said plan. Once you have a plan in mind, you have to put it into motion. Most of the time that I'm being the aggressive player and I'm pushing teams, I'm able to catch people off guard because they're all just kind of sitting there with the hamster wheel spinning in their head. They're not quite sure what to do. They're running around like a bunch of headless chickens and you're able to pick people off one by one because of that. This cannot be you if you're trying to beat these aggressive teams. If one thing out of this entire video sticks with you, it should be this. A stationary player is a dead player. No matter what, you should always be moving. Now, of course, I know that there are some exceptions, like console players cannot move while looting. There are some workarounds to it that you guys should learn, but I do know that there are some cases where you have to be stationary. But the rule of thumb should always be that you are moving. Even if you're just looking at something, you should be strafing left and right to make sure that you're not just standing still. While the Kraber did receive a nerf, it still is a very good gun. If you're just standing still, somebody might have a lucky Kraber headshot on you, and now your team's dead. But jumping into tip number four though, this is to use their aggressiveness against them. A lot of the times when people are super aggressive, especially in pub games because most of the time people just don't care, they will be overly aggressive to the point where they will give up any positional advantage they may have had on you. This is huge for you as a player and this is part of the reaction stuff that I'm talking about. You have to make split second decisions. Because if they give up any positional advantage on you, then you need to be pouncing on that. You need to collapse as fast as you possibly can to keep them at that disadvantage and possibly take them out of the game. Once they're in a bad spot, you can combo abilities, you can collapse on them, you can nade spam, you can do a bunch of other things, but you have to be doing something. If they get into a bad spot and you do nothing about it, then you've lost the fight. If one of the players is super aggressive, they get singled out from their team, you kill them, then it's an easy 3v2 and you can start to slow down a little bit. Then you can start to work some angles, take the fight a little bit smarter because they can't be as aggressive on you. But this also transitions perfectly into tip number five and that is learning to adapt. Look, as much as I would love them to, plans do not go the way that you think they're going to. Apex is a game where it's constantly evolving, things are changing. You can never account for players 100% of the time, they're going to do something that's completely out of left field. So you need to learn how to adapt to your current situation. That's why in tip number one, where you are taking in every single little bit of information, it doesn't stop at the start of the fight. You have to be taking in information constantly throughout the entirety of the fight and even after the fight you have to be taking in information. Working under pressure is one of the key skills in Apex and that's going to be something that takes you super far in the game. Yes, obviously having some good game sense and aim is a very valuable skill, but for the most part a lot of players freeze when they get the slightest little bit of pressure put on them, and that's what holds them back. So if you're able to stay cool, calm, and collected through fights, then you are already a step above a lot of players. And going into tip number six, this is that you will not win all of your fights. You have to accept this. It sucks, I know. Nobody wants to lose a game, nobody wants to lose a fight, it's just a bad feeling. But what separates a good player from a bad player is understanding that losing a fight is not a bad thing all in all. Once you lose, start to look back at the fight. You can learn what they did, how they pushed it, how they took angles, and start to adopt that into your own gameplay. So that when you're being the aggressive team, you can learn how to be that aggressive team properly. And this will also help you understand how to beat these aggressive teams. Because when you think like an aggressive team, you understand how their mind works. And when they're pushing you, you will start to understand the weak spots in your team's armor and be able to adapt yourself to cover that spot so that when they try to push it, you're there ready to counter it. How does that saying go? The best defense is a good offense? It's the same idea. If you understand how they want to push you, you can understand how to counter them. But like I said guys, this is not an overnight thing. This is something that you will have to work on game after game after game. So don't get mad, don't get discouraged, pick yourself up, ready up for another game, go in and just constantly be learning and adapting. Over time, this will make you an absolute beast of a player. So with all this being said guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did and you want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest Apex Legends tips, tricks, and news, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. And we do daily Apex Legends videos, so if you want to be notified when they go live, ring that bell as well. Thank you guys all for watching. Once again, I'm 8 Second Gaming and I will see you in the next one.